Adam, hi. Hello there. She's impressive. Yeah, this here is Valkyrie, humanoid robot. Weighs uh, about 300 pounds, six feet tall. And uh, we're here testing her uh, to see what her capabilities are as a humanoid robot. One of only four in existence, she was originally designed by NASA to work in disaster relief, but now the aim is to send her to Mars. Let's say that there is a mission to Mars and they can send up some robots ahead of time before the astronauts come up to do some more of the serious work. She's designed to move in a human-like way to help engineers discover any problems that real humans would have on a space station. Oh, we're powering up. Oh, she's taking her own way. So basically, from the, from the operator station, Jordan can control all the different joints of the robot. And what we're seeing right now are some more kind of pre-programmed oh. movements. <laughs> and doing all this while on one leg. Yes. So what's she's important showing to... off. Back in Cornwall, I'm meeting a robot designed for a totally different type of human interaction. This is Robo Thespian. What type of customer? buys Robothespian. Our biggest traditional market was sort of science centers, places where they were explaining engineering technology. A humanoid robot's a really good way to do that. Just say the same thing over and over again every time somebody comes past, wave hello, explain something. I think the last time I counted, they were in 27 countries in science centers. Oh, wow. Making these stationary Robothespians believable has taken a great deal of engineering. Getting them to interact with us humans is a tricky business and needs some clever software. So is there AI on board? It does have some intelligent features, so you'll notice the little camera in his forehead. In there we have face recognition, age recognition, gender recognition. So we can use that information coming back from the camera. It could be hello sir, hello madam, hello young person, hello old person. As well as modifying his preset performance depending on who's looking at him, Oh, nice. Gospel has identified me as male and 27. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing well. Robo Thespian can be controlled totally remotely. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Robo Thespian. This is Mike on the other end. Um, how, how much control of Robo Thespian do you have? Um, so I have quite a bit of control. I can manually move my head around, but I've also got some uh, automated moves. Rather than completely stopping as soon as I finish talking and looking like I'm dead, it just keeps me looking uh, engaging in, in a sort of natural sort of feel. I can obviously run through some uh, sequences as well. <laughs> Like Robothespian, Valkyrie can do simple work autonomously and be controlled remotely via telepresence. Jordan, I'm coming to take over. She's operated via a HTC Vive virtual reality system with bespoke additional software. So I can do like a smooth gesture, or I can point, click, and then the arm comes and finds where my control is at. Valkyrie Space has a spinning LiDAR sensor, which creates a 3D model of what she's looking at. There are two cameras as well, which lay an image on top of the 3D map. Boof. Boof. This is cool. This footage of another Valkyrie shows how she can use this information to judge the distance to an object and pick it up accurately. Unfortunately, my Valkyrie isn't having a good day. Oh, God. <laughs> But you can't blame her. Space exploration isn't really my forte. There we go. It's all over. On Mars, it doesn't matter how robots look, but to be taken seriously on Earth, they need to be as realistic as possible. I'm being shown Engineered Art's newest project. So this is Mesmer. Yeah. Um, and Mesmer already looks very different to um, Robo Thespian. So what are the applications here? OK, so Mesmer is about making robots that are very like people. OK. So it's about recreating celebrities, recreating scenes from movies. Every aspect of Mesmer is designed to be lifelike, from the bespoke joints in the neck to tiny tendons which help its eyes move more realistically. Wow. Kind of useless without a face, though. So the company 3D print their own silicon masks. Uh, so, oh, good, oh my goodness! This mesmer is designed to look like Chinese film star Jing Bo Ran <laughs> for an exhibition in the Madame Two Swords in Shanghai. The finished piece is fitted with the same facial recognition as Robo Thespian, so it can interact with visitors. And over here is a biarticulate dynamic 
balancing robot. Engineered Arts are developing legs to make these robots walk too, with the aim of combining facial recognition, lifelike features and realistic movement to create the ultimate entertainment bot. I think if I could make this robot run up to you, press its nose against your nose, go booyah and jump out the window, you would like that. Yes. It's like taking the cinema, taking that kind of experience and making it real. Making it real. So whether it's exploring new planets or creating whole new forms of robotic entertainment, there's no doubt we'll be seeing more and more humanoid robots like these in the future.